Hey guys, today I have a quickie for you. I almost didn't bring it to you because I gotta be honest, it's not a gun. And I know um, most of you only tune in to see some guns, but I have something uh, very, very unique, uh, which is a cipher machine. I actually have two cipher machines. I'm gonna talk about those uh, made uh, for the US Army. But before I talk a little bit about these, and by the way, uh, we'll be offering these for sale, uh, not something that I collect and not something I know very much about. In fact, I know very little about. I'm sure some of you will be able to help me out, give me more information. I'm gonna be passing it along to a lucky winner of our auction. Um, but let me do a little bit of background on the Cypher machine. Uh, since the beginning of time, people have been uh, transmitting information uh, back and forth and people have tried to intercept that information to gain uh, political or strategic advantage over the enemy. Probably the most famous example in World War II was the Enigma. There is a, a number of movies that have been made about the Enigma, and uh, if you're hunkered down still because of COVID, many of you are, get, are free at last, uh, getting outside and feeling much better about the, the world in general. Um, but the Enigma machine, some of the uh, movies, uh, there was a movie in 2001, I believe it was, called Enigma. Uh, that's worth watching if you want to go back and check it out on Netflix. Um, but then also there was a remake, which I'm told is a lot more uh, accurate, uh, called The Imitation Game. And that was uh, where the British at Bletchley Park in, in England uh, put together a crack team of scientists that cracked the code for the Enigma. They actually were able to rebuild the machine. The technology behind that is well advanced of this cipher, uh, well advanced of anything else the world uh, had at the time. The Enigma machine, uh, built by German scientists, uh, actually used the rotators, which this, you'll see the rotators where you set, you set a code for the day, and it'll change the letters so that A equals C or B equals, so as you change the letters and you put them in, it translates it into a different letter. Um, but the Enigma machine was so advanced, it used rotors and also circuits, so that even if you typed AAA, they would be three random letters, not the same. And that's what made the Germans believe that it was an unbreakable code. The breaking of that code actually was started uh, by Polish scientists. And uh, we know uh, before, before the war even started, there were Polish scientists who were, who were trying to make, to crack the code and got a little bit, uh, made some progress with it, but were not able to fully crack it. They got little bits and pieces of it. Um, and of course, when the Germans invaded, those Polish scientists escaped to France. Uh, they then worked with uh, French um, scientists, officials, actually they're mathematicians, um, tend to be people, I, I don't want to be mean about it, but um, no other way to put it, nerdy people who just had phenomenal brains. I can't even imagine um, doing what they did, but they were able to take all the possible combinations, which was, um, I actually read an article, said there's billions of possibilities, and they were able to narrow it down and get most of the code translated. Um, of course, France was um, uh, attacked in uh, 1940, and therefore the, the scientists uh, and mathematicians then moved on to England, where they were housed in Bletchley Park, and joined with the British um, scientists, mathematicians. And that's really the story of Imitation Game. Uh, I believe that movie was made in 2014. And it is also worth watching. The end result of the work that they did there, it took a very long time, but they were able to re rebuild or reenact a copy. It was more of a large computer, uh, early computer, that was able to take the message and over a period of time, uh, decipher all the possibilities, random possibilities, and come up with breaking of the code. Now, they couldn't do that very quickly. It took a long period of time. So if the Germans said, we're going to attack in an hour, it was too late. They didn't have time to do that. But if they gave a, a strategic plan for six months out or a month out, um, the British were able to uh, decipher that code. Again, in reading articles, it was a very close close-knit group of people. So other than the people working at Bletchley Park, uh, other than the people working directly there, there was only a handful of people in the entire world that knew, even knew that they, were, they had broken the, the German code. It is believed that both Churchill and Roosevelt uh, knew that they broke the code. Of course, they never told Joseph Stalin uh, because even after the war, 
This, uh, this secret was kept for 30, 40 years after the war because they used the same technology to break the codes of some of our other political enemies. Now, uh, other movies. I love war movies. I keep telling you guys that, and uh, hopefully you can find some good ones um, uh, as a result of this video. But there's another uh, movie which I really love. I love submarine movies, uh, U-571. Uh, loosely based on some facts, but um, generally not accurate. The actual submarine was U-110, uh, not U-571. And it wasn't the Americans. I know um, for you Brits, we like to take credit for everything. Sorry about that. But in this movie, the Americans were able to disable a submarine and before sinking it, they ran in and got the Enigma machine out of the submarine and brought it back uh, to England. But in fact, it was U-110 and it was the British. They did disable a submarine. Um, they were able to get the crew, most of the crew off, as far as I uh, know got most of the crew off and the Enigma machine. They then, of course, had to keep that crew under lock and key. They sunk the submarine and the, uh, ne they never, the Germans never got out a message that they had been captured. So therefore, the Germans just assumed that it was sunk and the Enigma machine was safe, but in fact, they captured the Enigma machine. Now, uh, interesting to note that each branch of service had a different Enigma machine. So they were, with that machine, they were able to break the Navy codes uh, much more quickly, whereas Bletchley Park were, was gathering the political and um, military messages, and then the Luftwaffe had a separate Enigma machine that they used. And that brings us to our cipher machine. Uh, much less so sophisticated, uh, much like my speaking, much less sophisticated. <laughs> but this cipher machine, also known as a converter, also known as an M209B, um, we'll get a close-up of that. Uh, it has a little cutout on the bottom. You can rest it on your lap. You open it up, and there, uh, we'll just take a look inside. Uh, you can see here it has a roll, almost like a ticker. Uh, that's the original paper. There's a screwdriver in there. That looks almost too new, but could be a, a original. Um, and with a, with a code of the day, you would just set uh, set the rotors to the code of the day. And I would imagine that um, the code for the day was delivered personally. So maybe a, a, a courier, a motorcycle driver would come up with the code for the day. Um, you would then set the rotors and each day that would be changed. So each day we would have a different code. So even if the enemy captured one of these, which was entirely possible, these went to uh, generals, not, mess, not the frontline troops, but it certainly would go pretty high up uh, to the headquarters. Um, they would get orders for the day, which would then be passed along uh, to the commanders at the front line. Uh, if one of these was captured, of course, if you don't know the code of the day, and the rotors is one, two, three, four, five, six, six letter possibility for the code for the day. So, um, and it, with it changing every day, capturing one of these would not help you a whole lot. Uh, this is completely workable. Uh, by the way, this. Uh, the, its order number is from Philadelphia, which is where I'm from, uh, but this was made by Smith Corona typewriters in Syracuse, New York. From the serial number, we know they made at least 30, 40,000 of these, which is far more than I expected. This is a U, uh, U.S. Army variation. You can see it on, on the uh, template. And they had separate ones for the Navy as well. Here's one uh, in the original uh, case. Uh, which you could carry on your belt. It's, it's fairly heavy. I, I would say this is about five pounds um, inside when I open it up. First of all, we'll pull out these manuals. Um, one of them is dated 1942, and the converter is dated 1942, so they were used throughout the war. Uh, you can see it's marked restricted. I would think it would have top secret stamped all over it. Uh, then they also have a message book where you would uh, translate the message, write them down. This manual is uh, dated uh, May of 1947, so we know it was used uh, beyond the war and certainly into the Korean War. This serial number on this second one is a lot earlier. Uh, this one is uh, the one I think I will uh, auction first. So the one with the, uh, the original cover and the manuals, uh, this complete kit, um, I will auction first. It has a similar screwdriver, but also these, these little tubes, there's two of these, uh, this uh, reminds me of the M1 carbine. It has one of these in the uh, stock, 
and when you unscrew it, just like the M1 carbine, it's an oiler. Um, as I imagine, the rotors uh, would be oiled fairly, fairly often. So this is the original oiler uh, and all the equipment that came with this machine. I, because I don't know a whole lot about these, I, I'm not sure what the public is, interest is. I know there are whole museums and several movies, whole museums dedica dedicated to cipher machines and decoding. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that find this fascinating. I'd rather uh, own a gun. Um, but for those of you who might be interested, I have seen these on the internet at $5,000. I don't know if that's what they're worth, but I think the best way to determine the value is to put it on Gun Broker for a dollar and let you, the public, decide what it's worth. We will put this one on Gun Broker for one dollar and it'll be a two-week uh, two auction. So from the time when we post this video, the time, time will begin. Uh, it'll be on Gun Broker. Feel free to ask questions, but if you would like to bid on this converter. And then, uh, depending on what it sells for, we'll probably then offer the second one for those of you who might have missed the auction. Hey, thank you for watching. And, uh, you know, when we think about winning the war, uh, we think about the, uh, the heroes uh, who fought the war. Uh, but these brilliant men and women uh, who cracked these codes, again, I have the utmost respect for them. Uh, certainly, they uh, shortened the length of the war. In fact, there are several articles that I read on, uh, on the Internet that said their cracking of the code um, uh, really turned the war around because we knew what the Germans were going to do. Not all the time, but many of the times we knew well before and gave us a huge advantage and certainly uh, saved thousands and thousands of lives on the Allied side. So kudos to those of you who are mathematicians and stay home and study. Not something that I'm really good at, but uh, for those of you who are, God bless you and thank you so much for your service to our country.